Welcome to episode three of Carp Angle. Before we start, it would actually be rude not to say a massive thank you to everyone for all their huge amounts of fantastic feedback that you keep sending us over this show. It really fuels us to keep going with this project and uh, yeah, we hope you carry on enjoying it. Talking of which, for this month's show, we've got one of the nicest guys in carp angling. He works massively hard at his job and at his fishing, and he gets the results as a result of that. So, I think I've gone on enough. Sit back and enjoy episode three. Got here really late last night. Dropped into a bit of an old haunt, sort of a bizarre canal basin, loads of big yachts and battleships, and yeah, slung a couple of rods down the side of the wall. It's about 18 foot deep. And lo and behold, just a couple of hours later, I've nicked the first one, this smaller common, and then this better one about R3. And what a great way to start my sort of short in and out adventure session with Joe over the next sort of 24 hours. Yeah, really could have gone any better. Well, that really was the perfect way to start the day, but I'm gonna get on the move now. The light has well and truly come through and I don't wanna take the piss. Um, it's kind of a no fishing area, but as long as you respect the boat owners, you don't sit here all day making loads of noise and leaving rubbish and stuff. They're actually good as gold and I've seen sort of four or five of them this morning and no issues, but yeah, definitely time to get on the move, get these rods reeled in and head off to one of my favorite, favorite day ticket lakes, Chigbra Fisheries, where even though we're in the middle of November and it's freezing cold, I've got a sneaky suspicion with a bit of walking around and that, we might be able to find a few in the edge. Well, we didn't want to hang around too long at the first venue because um, we didn't want to get in an arguments, did we? Although you like a little morning dispute, didn't you? Not a dispute as such. I like having a chat with the locals. You know, it's a spot, you know, you know the area, Joe. I've fished there for years. Um, I've never had any problem. I've never been asked to leave. I think it's about showing respect. I didn't get down till gone midnight last night and we were gone at sort of seven o'clock this morning. I think if you sit it out all day, yeah, you're gonna rub someone up the wrong way kind of thing. So yeah, it was about getting on our toes and getting on the move before anyone got pissed off. Awesome. Well, the idea with the feature obviously was to get a little insight into your angling. Yeah. So we set you a little challenge of catching from a, a multitude of, of different types of venue, didn't we? It wasn't yeah. just like go to a two different day to get lakes. It was yeah. what different types of venue can you come up with? Yeah. Um, so we've got the river out of the way. Yeah, canal, basin, river kind of thing. And we've come over to Chigbra now, which is a complex of gravel pits, uh, mature gravel pits, been here a long time. I just love it, Joe. Like, you know, you, I, I don't know what it is about the place. Maybe it's the stock of the fish, they're old, you know, they've got a lot of character to them. Maybe it's the fact that you can kind of creep around and do your own thing. I just, it's not really a cliche day ticket lake in terms of people hemmed in and stuff. And yeah, I've picked a sort of the middle sized lake to have a go at for, for a few hours today. Um, average depths seven foot something like that but you've got a lot of shallows you've got a lot of overhangs and cover it's broken up into three areas and I've got no rods I've got no gear and that's because the venue I want to go to after this uh, we'll come back to that later is just five minutes away and I thought why not just pop in here now quickly half hour walk around put a little bit of bait in and then while we disappear to the other venue in effect we're fishing you know there's fishing a bit of bait without fishing. fishing without actually doing any fishing yeah just means that when we come back here in three or four hours time, that bait's been in the water that long, they've been undisturbed, they haven't had rigs in there or lines in there. Um, I just find it works quite well in an angler's favour to, to just preempt and prime a few areas and, and then come back later. Definitely. I mean, people walk around looking for fish in lakes, don't they? But the chance of actually coming across fish feeding in the edge on natural, yeah, rare. it's quite slim, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, very know? rare. Especially this time of year. Yeah. But yeah. like you say, by doing that, you can see whether they've been in and visited the yeah, spot. Yeah, for and sure. Lots of cover, and I've got to get them out from underneath that cover. 
you know, they're not going to come out today for the sun. It's proper dull and miserable. But a little bit of nice bait, they might just come out and have a, have a snuffle around and that. And that's what I'm looking for when we come back. Physical carp or, like you say, the area's been fed on and stuff. Awesome. All right, so you've got a few little spots you want Let's to go and have a wander. Yeah, I've got a bag of flake here, which is basically like diced, sliced, crumbed, boily, loads of little particles and that. Not going mental, just little handfuls. I've actually seen a carp already, a real nice black one. And I'm just dampening that up a little bit, just to help bind it, just to get it out through these branches. But yeah, the secret here really is not going too mental. It's cold, the water temperature's dropping daily really now as we're going to winter and I just want enough to try and pull them out of these snags obviously it's totally unfishable from around here so I'm going to fish it from the opposite side and uh, put them across with a baiting pole Let's see if we can get one like that just a few whole 12 millers Well, for this bit, we've laughed off the carp fishing. We've come up to Scotland salmon fishing. <laughs> Big spay rods. <laughs> Keep expecting to see one jump out down here. This is a bit mad, isn't it, Al? It is a mad spot, mate. Um, about two miles that way is where we fished last night, so that's the canal. You've got the river going that way. You've got a backwater here off the river. You've got another backwater around there. Number of weir pools, a number of weir seals, locks. It is crazy, proper crazy. But this particular bit behind us, it's tidal, so that's now going out to the estuary, out to sea, mate. Um, not really the typical place you'd find carp, but this is Essex, and they do seem to find their way into everywhere, and there is a half-decent number in this tidal bit. It's like the end of the line for them, isn't it? It is, mate. You know, they've come over here at some point in the floods over the years. They can't get back up again. They're trapped in there. Probably flooded out of the Syndicate lakes, you know, numerous ones, isn't there, along the river? Yeah, I, I don't know what year it was, but there's been some bad floods over the years. Before people put the otter fences up and stuff, yeah, a lot of fish escaped and that. And this is their new home, and some home it is, you know. You imagine the water's rising and, and dropping every day. It's really savage, it's obviously saline. Um, it's pretty severe conditions, but carp are really adaptable, you know, and yeah, they're, they're thriving in there. I've done a little bit here over the years. It's, it's not an easy stretch, but it's exciting. You know, it's something really, really different. And yeah, come here on low tide, gonna go for a wander now. Fish spotting conditions aren't great, but at least sort of rig presentation is. You know, it's not absolutely ripping through and stuff. And drop on here for a few hours, see if we can nick a bite. And I guess the beauty of the, the flowing water is the fish have pretty much always got to be on the move. So if they're always on the move, they've always got to be hungry, surely. It's why, as the water temperature starts dropping, I spend more and more time on things like the river. Just as you say, mate, they've got to swim, especially in here, significantly, which means they've got to keep their energy levels up. And yeah, if I was a carp and I stumbled across a few citrus spoilies and that, I'd get them down, mate. So that's the plan. Awesome. Should we go and find some? Come on, mate. In and out. Here we are, mate. So we've found a fishing now, yeah. Yeah, no, no salmon fishing today. Um, now we're carp fishing. It is mad, isn't it? We are genuinely carp fishing. Um, come down a couple of hundred yards. Um, sort of walk past the best bit. You see that big sluice, a big concrete sluice. You've got fresh water coming in there, but it does get fished. And I thought, nah, let's you know come down a little bit further. Crept in through here to this Norfolk Reeds. You've got a little ditch coming in here which creates a slack the other side of it. You've got a bit of a slack on the inside here and you've got some very shallow water there. And a lot of those carp they sort of stay within this shallow water and that weir itself. Don't get me wrong I'm sure there are a few down here but 
the majority is sort of consolidated in this area. Um, I'm just going to literally lower the rigs down in the edge. Um, yeah, pretty simple fishing, Joe. Kick back in the Norfolk Reeds and put a brew on, mate, and, and give it a, a few hours, mate. I guess they don't really want to be in the, the proper salty water, do they? And that's why they, they hang around the outlets where the fresh water. They don't want to be in there full stop, do you know what I mean? But that's the, the card they've been dealt, and, and they deal with it really, really well. Um, it's so mad. It's very unlikely we'll see it today just because of all the recent rain and stuff, but come down here on a sort of spring, summer, autumn morning, um, and there's 50 mullet, maybe some big sea bass, and in amongst that, just some carp, like, and some bream, you know. Um, they all seem to do all right in here, but yeah, like you say, they are a freshwater fish. <laughs> They're not a sea fish, so they kind of do like that influx of fresh water coming in for them. Cool, all right, mate, we'll get your rod sorted Let's and we'll, we'll have a little look at your tactics. Yeah, nothing overcomplicated, really. No fancy rigs and stuff. The order of the day in a venue like this with such severe snags, rocks and stuff is just strength and reliability. I've got three and a half pound test curve rods, 20 pound main line, and I'm just fishing it straight to a lead clip, a big tractor lead on there to hold bottom in the flow, and a relatively long hook link, and that's just because of any build up potentially on the main line, I don't want it sort of congregating around the hook bait itself. 35 pound armor link, which is a seriously abrasion resistant hook link, little slip D, and then I'm just mounting a cultured hook bait on there with a bait screw. Like I say, really nothing complicated. It's about getting on top of a few fish, and if I am lucky enough to get the bite, you know, having gear that's strong enough that should it touch any of that woodwork down there or stones and stuff, I'm not going to get cut off. Do you screws all the time now, Al? Yeah, pretty much, mate. Um, yeah, almost exclusively. If I'm whacking it, then I'll still sort of tie the bait on or pierce the bait, but for an average cast, um, I just love them. Convenient, quick, simple. I like the metal ones for my bottom bait fishing. You know, I want the bait down on the bottom, um, especially in a situation like this. The last thing I want is that hook bait wafting around and the extra sort of weight in the, in the metal screw just enables it to stay a little bit more on the, on the bottom. But yeah, such a practical thing. I was really late getting on them, like years. Like I remember like the, the Sandown show when Rigmarole turned up and they had this product, these screws, and everyone was going mad for it. Like they sold out like in the first few hours and literally years went by, I kind of ignored it. Didn't believe that my bait would stay on and stuff. And it was really Ollie, he was like, Al, you need to start using these screws. And usually when Ollie says something like that, it's worth taking note um, as much as I don't like making him right. Um, and yeah, I've never looked back. I really haven't looked back. Such a practical and Simple thing to incorporate into your angling. Giving it a couple of hours, maybe two and a half hours here on the tidal stretch. Um, it's the sort of bit of water that if you're gonna get one, you usually get it within the first hour. It hasn't happened and I don't really wanna waste any more time here. The tide is coming up now quite quickly and as much as we could sit it out here for the rest of the afternoon and into the evening, in fact, I wanna get on my toes and go back to Chigbra. It's given me the opportunity to prepare the rods and the rigs for Chigbra and the sheer fact that I called in there this morning and put that little bit of bait in, it, it almost feels like I've already been fishing there or I still am fishing there. So yeah, without further ado, I'm gonna get the, the last couple of rods sorted here, get packed up, head back to the motor and then make the short drive over there and spend the last sort of three hours of today before it gets dark trying to nick one out the edge.
Okay, Alan, so we're at our third venue of the day, the lovely Chigbra Fisheries. I believe you've been here a few times in the past. I have, mate. It is a big statement, this. It's my favourite day ticket water in England. You know, and Lynn is amazing, Bluebell's amazing, but maybe it's because it's close to home. I just love it here, Joe. Lovely family that run it. You've got three different lakes to pick and choose from. Um, very old stock of fish. You know, you've caught some yourself. Um, they're pretty special. I just want to back Alan up a little bit here, right? He's always paid for a ticket, so it's not like yeah, he gets it free. It's not like he's a plug. This is my favourite venue because yeah. they always look after me. Nothing like that, right? He absolutely. I've paid my ten pounds to be here. Yeah, um, I just love it, mate. It's mature. Um, it, it's managed, but only to a point. You know, it's not manicured, and it's still got that wild feel to it. Certainly, when you creep around this pit and the one out the back, Scraley, you know. It's got that sort of jungle feel to it. You can creep in through the, the bushes and stuff. Um, yeah, I just really, really like it. We've actually been here once already today, though. Um, I sort of suggested to you this morning after pulling off the canal basin, bearing in mind we were five minutes away, let's just quickly call in. And it's, um, it's a tactic I will always try and adopt if I can, and that is, you know, even now with it being cold, just get a little bit of free food in. Um, so. You know, I've just put this rod out. Theoretically, I've only been fishing for less than five minutes, but I haven't. I've been fishing since about nine o'clock this morning, eight o'clock this morning when we come here. Had a little wander around, checked a few areas, found some nice clean areas and just put a tiny little bit of citrus flake and, and boil in. And that was about four hours ago. So I feel like I've, I've actually been kind of angling to a degree for that period of time. It's like short term pre-baiting, isn't it? It's yeah, not mate. kind of, you know, long term. It's just get a bit of bait in there. And whilst you're not there, it gives a chance for fish to get in, get confident feeding and, and start looking for a bit more. Isn't it? And I think I meant I haven't got like 15 spots on the go. There's probably four or five different spots that I put in just a very tiny handful of flake and maybe 10, 12 mil citrus bottom baits. I've obviously got here before getting this rod out, revisited those. There is no bait, Joe. It's all gone. Now, I want to think that is the carp, and there's every possibility it could have been the carp, but there's also birds on the water. You know, fish ones. Yeah, so, you know, who knows? However, I did check a spot further up the bank there, and on approaching it, there was a, a fish I actually recognised, real dark, snub nose common, about 22 pounds, and he was kind of just ghosting around on the area, like, there's nothing left for me. Like, where is it all got? Yeah, <laughs> come, on, come on, come <laughs> on. To be fair, mate, me sort of standing over the top of him, he did sort of uh, waddle out of the area, but yeah, and there's every possibility he'll tip back up on that area again. Um, a lot of the fish in here, um, especially at this time of the year, you know, those fish are now pushing in tight underneath the canopies and stuff just for that sort of additional warmth and comfort. So you're kind of snag fishing and I'm just playing a game of trying to coax them out, mate. Nice, bright, visual hook bait, tiny little bit of bait, enough to hopefully pull them out and, and maybe nick a bite. Awesome. All right, well, I know you're itching to get I am one itching. Out this, so Uh, you might have heard before um, people saying, oh, I don't mind catching tension bream. It uh, allows me to know my rigs are working perfectly. I don't mind catching tension bream either, but not for that reason, I just love them. But today I'm super grateful for this little tench because the wind was playing havoc with the long lengths of baiting pole and I was basically fishing in shallow water and wasn't getting a drop. A couple of times I had to redo the rod because I dropped the rig over the top of the other rod and stuff and I was pulling in big balls of weed. And it really wasn't giving me a huge amount of confidence that I was even fishing over there. Um, so to catch this little fella now, it's actually made me very confident that if I can get a rig back out there again, and I don't get pestered by too many of these, there is every possibility of a carp.
And that's why I love to play so much. A classic Chigba common. Quick bite too, like just a few minutes. Little citrus pop up, tight up against the snags. But we're just dealing with that lovely little Chigba common. And the rod's gone off. And that is not something to complain about. It just goes to show that putting that effort in in the morning, coming here for 45 minutes, having a wander around, it can't have done any harm. I think it's given them a little bit of confidence to veer out from those snags. And yeah, two bites in pretty quick succession. I'm certainly not gonna grumble about that on a cold November day. Mate, that's a, a lovely dark common, isn't it? Beautiful. It's what I love the place, Joe, man. See what you mean. Mega. Mega. Yeah. In the summer, mega float of water. They love a mixer. And when it gets cold, less anglers on the bank. And they tuck themselves up underneath that cover. Yeah, I've been down here when like, the lake's half frozen over and still looking vital to it. Good angling. Alan the Machine strikes again. Yeah. Ain't your first rodeo, is it? <laughs> we should definitely do these though, because I think there's one more bite to be had. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> got one. Annoyingly, I have actually got a couple more nets in the motor. But I didn't think it'd be quite as prolific as it has been. Another comment? Yeah. Are there many mirrors in here? No. Nah. But the ones that are, pff, you can imagine, quite are. Jet black. Yeah, jet black worrying. scalies, mate. Yeah. We'd be quite unlucky with the size of them, to be fair. Quite, they're quite small. What's the biggest you've had out of here? Mid 20s. No. To be fair, actually, this one's quite plump. Oh, what's going on there? A bit of a snag. Good net in! <laughs> Big hucks. Well, that's quite an impressive bag of fish, that, mate. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, that was um, mental to say the least. Not going to complain on a cold November day though. It is the first of four, in fact. Yeah, a couple of lovely classic Chigbra commons. A uh, little citrus 12 millers slammed right up tight against the snag with the use of the baiting pole. Proper lovely times. <laughs> Number three, I'll never get tired of catching these Chigbra commons. Proper stunning. Well, just to reiterate one more time, it is bait out everywhere, and I only put it in six or seven hours ago. They've clearly been in, they've had a good munch. I've tipped up later on this afternoon, and yeah, in quite a short space of time, managed to nick four bites, ending with this really decent one for the lake, to be fair. And what a way to end it is. As much as I am a greedy angler and I could probably squeeze another 30 minutes out of Chigbra, maybe nick one more bite. Do you know what? I'm going to call it a day now with that sun setting, get back down to the motor and um, head off on the last bit of our adventure. I'm going to take the lads to a real special park lake. It's actually where we filmed the first proper episode of Urban Banks. I haven't fished it myself for over 10 years, would you believe? But you know what? I'm really looking forward to it. Um, bit of a chill out. Um, we won't be rushing around so much there get in an area, get a little bit of bait out, get the rods out and set up and uh, have a brew and a chat with the boys. But yeah, so far it's been a fantastic sort of day. Big up Chigwa, thank you.
Here we are, venue number four, I mentioned back at Chigbra. It's a special little part like this one. It's actually where we filmed the first Urban Banks episode. It wasn't actually episode one, but episode two, the first proper one. And yeah, I haven't been down here for, well, I haven't fished it for maybe 10 or 11 years. Um, I've been down in the summer months and taught large groups of children how to use a whip and shot float and use a disgorger and that. Um, but actually carp fish it, yeah, 10 or 11 years. So a little bit nostalgic. Um, yeah, it's got a special place in my heart. I've kind of left it alone purely because the place is ramo now. Um, it's only because of sort of the, the COVID situation that it's very, very quiet at the moment. But things have changed a lot since back then. Um, it's had a massive influx of fresh stock put into it. Um, a lot of work done uh, around the lake with regards to swims and stuff. And you know, it's a really cool fishery. So I'm actually quite buzzing to be down here with the rods. Not really changing things from the uh, Chigbra approach, length of Klingon leader, uh, weed clip, short section of armor link, and then a little Ronnie rig with a 12 mil citrus pop up on. And I'm just going to fish these really, really tight in on the margin. Um, anglers, carp anglers especially, they tend to want to get as far out as possible. And especially a venue like this, it's got a really cool little island in the middle and everyone just wants to chuck to the island. But I know all too well that certainly the better fish anyway, they love hugging this near margin. It's where um, the pleasure anglers and stuff tip their bait boxes worth of food at the end of their sort of day sessions. And especially at this time in the evening, you tend to find those better fish. They come in right tight to the margin, have a good old mooch around to see if there's any sort of leftover bait there. And I'm hoping they stumble across this and just a small handful of freebies. So you're yeah, going to give it a few hours here. Possibly not do the night. We'll see how it goes. I'll try and get a, a Rochford Reservoir carp. Doing here, then, eh? Just having a little feel around, mate. Um, obviously, got a big tree here, leaves fall off it all the time, branches, um, and it's the margins. It's the area where, if they're going to throw an old bike in, or a road cone, or a street sign, it's going in the edge. So, I just want to make sure it's relatively clear down there. I'm not looking for a solid crack, you know, it's not the nature of this kind of venue, but just a consistent level dining room table basically somewhere I can put a little bit of food and when they come across it it's not on a mad slope or not in the middle of the axle of a BMX or something. So the obvious thing to do here would just be the cast. It's not like I've got to clip up against something real tight or it's a dead simple cast, just a little underarm flick. Problem is the water's about a foot and a half deep and it's very, very soft. So even with a light lead, I'm gonna lose quite a lot of it into that soft substrate. Plus, it's just that minimal disturbance thing. Um, I don't know how spooky these fish are, but I can't imagine they're gonna like leads landing on the reds. So it's just a nice, quiet, stealthy way of getting the, the hook bait out there. I'll also know how many sections this is. I'll keep this set up and um, should I get a bite, I can just keep going back to that same spot very, very accurately. Well, just sitting having a coffee with the boys and the first bite of the evening. Only a little one, but nice to catch. Well, hopefully if I land it, catch from another venue. How's that coffee, Joe? Lovely, I really need it. <laughs> Early start and uh, all of that. Nice little comment. Yeah. Well, he's only a bubby, but yeah, it's nice to get a bite. Hopefully, before we have to disappear from here, there'll be one slightly bigger to show you guys. Cool little carp. Considering the venues that I've sort of turned up and fished today, this was my van car. This was supposed to be the really easy one. Um, it's actually turned out really quite tricky. I'm going to blame the weather. There's a massive drop in temperature. Um, it's going to definitely drop below freezing tonight. Real clear skies. I did nick that nice one. Um, had hoped for a few more bites, but sadly it wasn't meant to be. Um, it's getting on for 10 o'clock now. I'm going to get back in the motor, I drive to one final destination today, which is a little sort of irrigation reservoir, a little club lake. There's actually some really special fish inside it. Um, speaking to some of the local lads, it's not fishing very well at the moment, but 
we're in with a shot of a real special one. So gonna head there now, probably wrap it up today with regards to filming because yeah, I wanna try and keep it nice and quiet uh, and stuff, get some rods out, but I will catch up with you guys in the morning where hopefully I've got something more to report. Well, after a seriously hectic day yesterday, we decided to have a little chilled one this morning. Still got up before sunrise and it was a beautiful sunrise. That was lush, it? proper lush. Especially for this time of the year when it's cold and long nights, it was nice to see a bit of light this morning. I don't know about you, but it's definitely one of my favourite times of the day. Sunrise and sunset. Yeah. 100% Joe. Can't beat them, can you? And I that's think one most the, people would agree, wouldn't they? It's know? one of the beauties of being an angler, isn't it? You know, yeah. being outside and, and witnessing those things and it makes you feel uh, alive, doesn't it? And yeah. it's, it's a good way to start the day. With a feel good track. <laughs> Thanks for today. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're absolutely right, mate. You know, blessed as anglers to be able to appreciate that so many times over the course of a year. Cool. Right, so we got here after dark. We didn't really know, well, we obviously had a little walk around, you know the lake, but it wasn't until this morning that me and Mike got to actually see what it was all about. Um, nice little place. Well, what do we know about it? It's very typical of Essex, you know, having come from sort of Buckinghamshire myself, uh, sort of gravel pits up there, do you know what I mean? Um, down in Essex, you get a lot of this, a lot of farmers' irrigation reservoirs, um, and they kind of are everywhere, all over the, the arable farms and stuff. Um, so yeah, it's used in the summer months to pump water out to keep crops healthy. Um, but savvy farmers get approached by savvy anglers and they take leases on and stuff. This particular one is, for this area anyway, this little area of Essex, steeped in history, mate. It's been here a long time, the club, long, long time. And um, yeah, some real old carp in it. Um, it's not the most idyllic venue, but the prizes are in the lake, if you know what I mean. Mm, well, um, that's something that I always say with Adam is, you know, you'd fish an ugly lake for nice carp, yeah. but you wouldn't fish a nice lake for ugly carp. No, nah, you're so right. I'm, I, that's, I definitely agree with that too. So yeah, in here, there is a really impressive stock of, of old fish. Um, what with the water level been down, I knew when we came here, it was always going to be a, a tricky, you know, shout to, to bag one. But if we had, if we had it done, it would have been real special, mate. Good chance we'd been a 30 pounder and definitely a proper, nice, dark, scaly one. So. Hey, the rods ain't in yet. I know, I know. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Um, right, so this morning we've woken up, we've, <coughs> we've had a good look and you've spotted a couple of fish, haven't you, mate? Yeah, so last night I sat it out till, I don't know, one o'clock, something like, what time did I come and say goodnight to you? Yeah, it was probably half 12-ish. Um, basically slowly prepared three zigs uh, real slowly because I was kind of fishing off the barrow with the intention of potentially moving if they did show anywhere else. The three of us sort of see that one potential show up in this corner and then yeah as I'd done the first rod um, I did see a show more towards the centre of the lake so I dropped a rig on that really discreetly 1.1 ounce lead single cast that was it it was out um, and by the time I'd sort of prepared the second zig there was another one a bit further to the right a little bit shorter again dropped one on there and uh, yeah, got the third one out. So I basically put three rigs out with very light leads with single casts on a show. And what more can you do, you know? That's the beauty of those kind of short zigs, isn't it? You know, with, with this kind of lake, you said yourself, there's there's a lot of um, yeah, you're fussy weed on you're, the bottom. You're talking like 99% of the bottom covered in, in candy floss, blanket weed type stuff. And it's, you know, it varies from point to point, but it's not really anywhere more than a foot up off the bottom. And then you've got leaves all over that yeah. as well. So, you know, it's very easy for your hook bait to get lost in that, isn't it? If you, if you weren't fishing a zig or you weren't fishing something balanced on top of it nicely. Yeah. I feel in effect I was fishing a bottom bait, really, because by the time that lead sort of fallen down and penetrated into that blanket weed, uh, in my head anyway, that sort of little bit of foam with the maggots coming out of it, it's just sort of sitting a little bit proud of, of that blanket weed. 
perfect um, presentation really isn't it yeah. and, and a deadly one that you don't see many people using no you know zigs are much more commonly associated with length behind them you know high pressure fishing, yeah fishing up in the water with them but yeah they're just little short zigs really to combat a problem and that problem is the blanket weed it's something i've done quite a lot over the years and, and done quite well on is you know on some tricky lakes as well it's just shorter zigs and yeah. like you said you know a lot of people it's, it's they only think about zigs for them top top few layers yeah. but the carp are always swimming around you know sort of in the mid water or whatever level they're comfortable at aren't they so just those those shorter ones sometimes it's it's bang in front of their face and even if they are looking for food because it is better weather for it i think that's the other thing you know i've i've same as you joe i've fished other venues that you know hasn't got a blanket weed problem because it's a clay bottom for example and just having it positioned yay much up off the deck Sometimes when they are not feeding, they're just mooching around, you know, swimming from point A to point B, they can often be at that kind of level and it's just giving them something direct line of sight that sometimes they will suck in, but nothing last night, <laughs> nothing last night. But the positivity of the morning, not only did you make me some fantastic coffee and we had a lovely sunrise and we listened to some beautiful music. Croissants. Don't forget the croissants Don't out. The croissants. <laughs> uh, so it was a lovely morning. No, I have since seen three further shows. So I've redone all the rods. The fish had swung round a little bit, even further to the right. So bang, 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 really discreetly single cast again. And then see two more shows, even further into the corner. So I flipped two of the rods and I've come round again and I'm pretty much quiver tipping at the moment. <laughs> like with a 90 degree angle coming off the rod tip. What about you? Just smashed some solids out there, didn't you? Yeah, well, I knew I wasn't on the fish <laughs> and I didn't want to be poaching you up. So, um, well, yeah. Thank you. Lobbed a couple of solid bags in some weed and had a good night's sleep. <laughs> good lad. <laughs> good lad. Now, it's been wicked, man. It really has been good. Um, shame about the park late last night. I was really holding out for us getting a few bites there. I just think the real sudden crash in temperature um, and the fact that when I'd seen them, you know, in, in, the pre in the days previous, we had a lot of fresh water coming in there from the floods and stuff. They just weren't using that particular area of the lake. Maybe a bad call on my part with regards to location, but you can't win them all. But well, you smashed the rest of the day. It was good, mate. mate. It was really good. I enjoyed and, it. You know, it was good to see because you know you'd put that effort in beforehand as well, hadn't you? You've yeah. been up there a couple of times. Give them a little bit of bait, and that little bit of effort makes all the difference, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, a lot of people wouldn't do it. You know, you go on crazy baiting up missions in the middle of the night sometimes. Yeah, don't you? you like know, hours away from your home. Yeah, I do, mate. I do because. I don't get a huge amount of time. In the case of us fishing together, it's been sort of 36 hours. And I want to get the best out of it, you know, best out of it for me, have a nice time with you, people watching it. And it don't come easy. And as it gets colder, it becomes even harder. So the more effort you can put in, you know, the more you're stacking the odds in, in your favour. And anyone listening, you know, that moment that someone like Joe or I used the word went and baited up, everyone's sort of the assumption that well, we get free bait, we're filling it in. It's the polar opposite. It's just a little bit, mm. a little bit of free food, man. Mm. Like it's not like yeah, excessive amounts of bait, you know, or over baiting. It, it's just creating some confidence, basically. And you know, the, the key is also, I'm sure you know you'll agree is multiple spots because yeah, a little sure. bit of bait yeah. dotted around the lake yeah. means that they're going to be finding it you know yeah. such so much higher chance than finding it and they just get used to it, it becomes normal doesn't it oh there's a bit more of that Ooh, yeah sweet, you're that. so Ooh. right yeah <laughs> and also the it's depending on the venue you're going to if you take chigborough for example granted it was quite quiet yesterday but it could have been busy you know and if i've just gone up there and got my eye on one area and one spot invested some bait into that and time and then tip up and there's someone there you know it's massively deflating so just having the flexibility to, to move as well, it, it'll often stack the odds more in your favour. And I think a lot of people will probably look at that Chigbra thing and think, well, that's an easy lake. But I know it's not. I know people go there in the summer and do 24, 48 hours and might only have a couple of fish, you know? Yeah. Um, so to, to catch four in a couple of hours, well, yeah. it's four in about 20 minutes, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was really good, yeah. Really good. Big ups. Awesome. Thank nice one, bro. We've still got time yet, though. Yes. Come on, universe. <laughs> properly coming to the end of the session now but i'm going to squeeze another 30 minutes out of it they've swung around even further they're now well i say they what i can see of carp 
uh, seems to have sort of materialised further into this corner. I've seen a, a half decent sort of distortion of water vortex and I climbed up a tree and did actually manage to see a little bit of fizzing. They're doing anything but ripping the bottom up, but when you've got nothing to go on and I've got about half an hour left, I've got to at least try for that last little bit. Um, I've took the little short zig off and switched it over to a little bit of plastic with some foam underneath it to literally make it fall incredibly slowly through the water. It's about a foot long, the hook link, little mono hook link. I'm going to lose the lead and I reckon pretty much all of the hook link into that blanket weed and this is just going to very gently settle on top of it. I'm going to take some sweet corn, mush it up in my hands to let it really flutter down through the water incredibly slowly. Don't know what else to do. <laughs> That's my last gasp chance to try and leave a final bite. Well mate, you knew we were up against it on this lake. The conditions have been completely against us. Do love an excuse, don't we, us anglers? <laughs> um, yeah, we can make all the excuses in the world. Got real cold, didn't it? Real cold. Um, hindsight, maybe should have stayed at the park lake. But yeah, it was nice, mate. We had a lovely evening. Didn't manage to catch one. Chopped and changed a few things this morning. Didn't manage to catch one. But yeah, I feel I've worked hard. Most importantly, had a nice time. That's what's good about it. Yeah, we had a real busy day yesterday, yeah. but we didn't have a chance to stop and chill and have a little social. And uh, yeah, we made up for that, haven't we? Yeah. No, I really enjoyed it. Thanks for inviting me out. No, thanks, thanks you know, me. I kind of suggested to you, didn't I? Let's go here and sit here for two days or let's go here and sit here for two days. And you're like, nah, let's go and do what you normally do, Alan. Let's go and like, and I'm really glad you've done, done that because, um, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. It kept it interesting. You know, a variety of different lakes, yeah. different tactics. You've worked hard for them and you've got the results, mate. So awesome. Sweet. Obviously, we've got a bit of a cold winter ahead of us, but hopefully we can get you out in the summer. Maybe uh, give you a little go on the old dicky boy. I would love to do that. That would be a great honour, Joe, to go and catch one on your rod. Um, and we've also come up with a few other creative ideas. So, yeah, let's do that, mate. Let's get back out again soon. Awesome, mate. In the meantime, keep smashing life, Big bro. Big love. Thank you, Joe. Top, Thank you. See you later, guys. If we talk about trying to bodge it up, I learned the hard way when I first started carp fishing. Um, you know, we obviously, in those times, there wasn't that much tackle out there and that much knowledge. But what I soon learned was, um, if you didn't have any swivels, you could get a bead, so you put your lead on, then you get a bead, and you put your lead through your, your nylon, and then if you went through three times, it held the lead in place. Yeah, so that was my rig. So it was the most basic rig of all, yeah? So all it was, was a lead, you pull it through, get your line through, then you put your bead through three times. Leave a long link like this, and then we'd tie the hook on, yeah? Because we didn't have any swivels. If you had a swivel, then you'd put a swivel on, then a bead, then your lead. So this would have been our running lead. Anyway, I caught absolutely hundreds of carp using just a bead and a hook and a lead and it was fine until I started fishing lakes with 30 pounders in and then it wasn't fine and then I realized that's the end of that and I got as many swivels as I could. I could confess to a lot of things but I'm not gonna. Um, <laughs> I was on a charity do once um, and we were on this lake and I'd been plumbing around me swimming, I'd found this little tiny gravel spot and it was tiny, it was like a church spire almost, coming right up out of the deep water and I'd spent ages and I'd managed to get a bait right balanced on the top of it and there'd been fish cruising up and down. Got it all in perfect position and just, just as I sort of put it down on the rods and sat back down on my chair, there was a clang, 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 clang and it was a saucepan and a spoon and it was like dinner was ready at the other end of the lake, um, you know, for, for everybody participating in this event. And I thought, oh God, I can't wind that rod in. You know, it's taken me forever to get it there. I thought, I know. So I was a master at stroke rods, an absolute, I've got so many ways of doing stroke rods, it's unbelievable. So I employed one of these little tricks. So I put two rods, you know, set away, 
up against the bush or whatever. And the rod that I've left out there, so I'm only using two, I've put another rod up there, third rod up there, so it looks like they're my two rods. And the rod that I left out on the spot, I got a very heavy back lead, I got in the margins and I clipped it off the front of the rod tip and put it on the bottom so that it's now not on the alarm, it's between the two alarms on a buzz bar and the rod tip's bent down like that towards the bottom. I then got a marker flow and another lead and a very short piece of line and put that right next to the tip and adjusted it so that the marker floats cocked so that as you look at it, it's just my plumbing rod. It's obviously my plumbing rod. Went off to dinner. Anyway, went to dinner, dinner turned into a few beers, a few smokes, this, that and the other. <clears throat> and then everybody said that we split into it was a very long, thin lake and the, and the, the food and party were at one end and they went in two groups and, and everyone was there. I mean, I remember Lee Jackson was there, I think F was there. There was a lot of known anglers there and a lot of punters and, and you know, there was a lot of people. Anyway, it split into like two potential parties. Everyone on the West Bank said, oh, we'll all go to this area and everyone on my bank will go to this area. I was feeling a little bit worse for wear for one reason or another. I think somebody must have given me the wrong tobacco or something. Um, so I've said, as we've, it, they're having the party beyond my swim, I said, I've just got to do something in my bivvy and get some bits and pieces, get a jumper or whatever. Really, I was a little bit, whoo, I thought oh, I've got to have a little sit down, a little bit of me time. So I've walked into my swim, sat down, I thought, oh, get your head act together, Laney. And I've looked down in front of me and the marker float's gone. And I thought, the marker float can't go. It's like, it's not attached to anything. It's only attached to six, and I've looked and I can see it. And it's a couple of inches, you know, a foot under the water on its side like that and I've looked at the tip and the back lead's no longer going down that's also on its side and I thought oh I've only gonna got one on <laughs> how and I've looked and opposite me oh no more than 60 70 yards away are a group of anglers yeah all in a swim all chatting and getting ready to go down to their party and I thought am I gonna get away with this you know this is all gonna be pretty obvious that I've left this rod out so I thought I know I'll pretend to stalk one out and in my state of mind at that time, I thought that this was a really plausible idea. So what I've done, I've stood up and nonchalantly walked down to the water. They're watching, say they're watching, they're looking at me, you know. Um, and I've walked down to the water and then I've jumped back like that, like whoa, and crouched right down and sneaked back away from the water. I've then grabbed a handful of like pellet or particle or something and I've crept back up to the edge and I've thrown it in in front of the rod tip and then crept back again. By now they've clocked and they're sort of looking, I could see them looking over and saying, what's Laney up to there? I've then got one of these rods out of the bush, unshipped the rig and laid it down next to the plumbing, pseudo plumbing rod that's already got a carp on it. And I've laid it down next to the rig like that and I've sort of stepped back and I thought, how long do you wait? you know, <laughs> before the imaginary bite, which is gonna come from two foot off the rod tip. <clears throat> so I've waited about three seconds, and it got like that, picked up the rod with the fish on, and heard one of them go, in hell, Laney's in already, really? And they're all like, bloody hell, good angling, and all this, and I'm like, he, said, he only just dropped it in, he just thought one right from under his rod, you can hear all of this coming across the water. And, I've got, and as soon as I looked into this fish, I've started, I've kept the rod tip under the water and I've started winding and winding. And next to me, I'm on a little point, is a bay. <clears throat> and then I realised that this fish has taken quite a bit of line. And he's gone round the point and he's down in the bay. And I'm only supposed to have hooked him three foot out. So I've got him under there and I'm trying to not show the reel and me pumping and pumping and pumping. And eventually there's a swirl under the bush. So I've put the net in, lifted it up and this massive great big tree branch has come out the water that it's obviously gone through at some stage. As it's hit the surface, this branch sows the fish, which is still about 20 yards behind it. So now I'm thinking, oh, it's, it's all a bit of a giveaway. Um, so I've untangled all this branch and I've wound down into this fish and eventually, long story short, I've got him in the net. He's a common about 21 pound and nobody sussed it, not a single person. But the thing was, they were all giving it how brilliant I was, you know, that I'd gone down and stalked this fish and got it, you know, in two seconds out the margins. And I just had to accept it. I'm like, yeah, I'm good at all of that. But <laughs> the thing had probably been on for about an hour. Uh, yeah, it was a bit of a stroke, but hey ho. That's my confession. Oi oi. Well, here we are. Just got the rods out again. New week, new session. 
Um, that last one obviously got seriously beaten up. I turned up today, had a quick look on the meadow, but I don't know, my heart was in coming on long reach to be honest with you. Um, so I've come over here, there was a similar wind to when I turned up the other week, which is like a northeasterly, blowing down the end there. Um, so I stood on the end of that for a little while. I saw one show out by the ramp, which I did actually see one on the as I was walking past here on my way home last week. So um, they obviously like it out in that area. I saw another one a few minutes later in a similar zone. So I've come around to this swim, stood here, and was only here for about five minutes. And a good and lumped out about 30 yards out. So they're obviously in the area, and I've got the old buzz on big time. I didn't want to uh, go in making loads of disturbance, so I flicked uh, two singles out and one on just a little short, beefed up zig. The weather's going to be good for the next couple of days. We've got a stronger northeasterly coming in the morning, so I've just been baited up some little spots that I was fishing the other week. Um, just prep them up ready in case the fish move down there on the end of that wind but at the moment i'm on fish weather looks bang on got a lovely cup of tea in my hand all is well in the world <laughs> Well, things got a little bit mental yesterday afternoon. Um, I'll show you the outcome of that in a minute, but first of all, I thought I'd better explain the story. So they stopped showing. I probably saw about 12 fish show yesterday afternoon, which is unreal considering I only saw one or two showing here the last session. So I knew I was bang on them. Um, after a few hours of just you know fishing for a drop, I thought to myself, oh, I'd rather, rather be on some spots for the night. And also there's some shallow areas out there so um, big long shallow bars so I wanted to kind of try and be on top of them with at least two of the rods so I messed around found a couple of uh, shallow spots along that bar which is well the second bar which is probably about what is it it's just under 80 yards 70 odd yards I think um, two single look baits out there I was going to put a little bit of bait out just as it was getting dark and uh, the third rod I was humming and ahhing with, I was like, mm, I'd cast it out towards the uh, ski ramp. And basically, it was quite funny actually, a uh, cormorant was sat on there yesterday, and I see it sh <laughs> um, and it straight off the ramp into the deeper bit, so it wasn't on, on the slope of the ramp, and I saw them cleaning the slope of the ramp the other day, so oh, one's just showed. So I thought to myself, you know, as they're cleaning it, the God, imagine that cormorant crap you know if it, if it kills trees you know must must not melt the plastic on their jump <laughs> anyway done it off the other side and i'd seen a few fish showing out there so i thought to myself oi, oi, it's charming up for me <laughs> i mean imagine what they eat it's just loads and loads of fish so as it comes out and it's coming out white in the water i mean it it must be giving off some kind of attraction mustn't it anyway so i thought well that one had a, a nicer drop on it bit of a more depth um, but I won't leave it I won't disturb that one I don't want to be casting around making even more disturbance I'm happy with that I'll leave it so I think it gets to about eight o'clock right hand rod quite a tight clutch on it because there's some um, boys out there I've run down jumped on the rod straight away just pulling me in the lake a flat rod of me twice and I just I was trying to get I was thinking oh my god how am I ever gonna land this you know it's it's, it's gonna go for them boys and then it was caught up on something and it was just oh I, I, I'm never gonna get this in and I could feel it kind of grating back and I don't know whether it was like a shallow spot or a, a weed bed or something uh, to be honest with you now I, I, there's something out there you know um, I've looked at the line since and it is all chafed up so anyway Epic battle ensued. This fish just was not having any of it. Um, kited around to the right on a long line and it was just kind of on the surface. I could see this tail flopping out occasionally and it looked like quite a big tail. Oh, proper squeaky bum moments. It was heading for the island to the right, so I've had to plow on the pressure as much as I can, turn it. And then it was trying to get to the margin down the right here and 
Honestly, it was just uh, one of them fights. You think, I'm never going to get this in. What is this, you know? And as it come up, I see a mirror, a good mirror, and I thought, you know what? It looks a bit like Matley's. Whoa! Like, and like, it's gone in the net, and lo and behold, it was Matley's. Um, an absolutely amazing looking carp. I've seen pictures of it before, but no photos have ever done it justice. Um, almost a little bit like the, the Black Mirror in some ways, it had sort of similar characteristics. So, absolutely like buzzing with that, didn't know what to do. Uh, but I'm definitely going to need some help, so I put it in a sling, walks up the bank, guy up the uh, next swim along, sort of about 50 yards along, Terry. He's come down to give me a hand. But as I've come back to the rods, the middle rod's got a bite as well, so I played that one in. That was a stocky, and uh, obviously, got a bit of footage for you, so sit back and enjoy. <sighs> Honestly, I was, I was literally. Buzzing with adrenaline until one o'clock in the morning. I couldn't sleep last night, really struggling. Treat himself to a lay in this morning, five o'clock. <laughs> and uh, it's looking good. I've seen a couple show, weather's bang on. Could be another chance of another long reach carp yet. Wicked. Well, this is absolutely mental. <laughs> Just, oh. Shows you've done it after that last session of nine nights chasing them around well trying to find them nothing showing get down here this week plenty showing get get some baits on them and uh well about 20 minutes ago the right hand rod's ripped off and i've literally sort of got pulled in the lake at like well probably 9500 yards range flat rod in me and just had this absolutely epic battle <laughs> Of the fish tearing off to the right and it was on the surface kept seeing these big pecs coming up and i thought how am i ever going to land this you know it was one of them the way it was steaming off to start with and then uh yeah i was just thinking about getting some photos and that sorted just went next door to ask for a hand come back and the, the middle rods had a bite on it so i don't know exactly how long it was on there for but I've certainly got it over, uh, well, it looks like it's on the first bar at the moment where there's a bit of weed. Just got to be careful with these shallow bars. Wouldn't normally keep the rod up so high. Oh, bloody hell, if I get this in, it'll be mental. Two bites in bloody 15 minutes. Madness. <laughs> See, the other one was beaten by this point. <laughs> Got a little bit more spirit in. Didn't go on such a run to start with that. Oh, it's beautiful carp, but it's... Come on, girl. Do ya. Stunner. Well, really crazy, crazy times. But oh, after nine nights of struggling last time, I think I earned them. Look at that for an absolute beauty. One of the uh, stockies I presume. Somewhere, I don't know, probably about 17 I reckon, out of guess. But the main one is still in the bag. So whilst we've still got a bit of light, let's get her out and have a look at her. Buzzing, absolutely buzzing, mental. I do love the old carp fishing. <laughs> There we go, there's the other side. Whew. <sighs> Feeling that. Oh, well done, mate. <sighs> Thankfully, I've got a bit of help here because this would have been a massive struggle on my own, trying to click the button holding this thing. Look at that lovely purple leathery head. Mate, <sighs> absolutely awesome. Right, I think it's time we uh, got him back to his watery home. <sighs> Well, it's been a couple of days since I had Matley's. Um, I had a terrible migraine yesterday. All day long, kept trying to sleep it off, but it just wasn't going. Oh, can't be washed time. Bit of uh, hot water on some kitchen roll. Bounce kitchen roll, I might add. That's stronger, look at that. Look. Poured water over it and it's still staying strong, just like a cloth. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, six o'clock in the morning. 
carpiest time of the day. There hasn't actually been any shows yet. I've been up since half four. Um, but there has been a little bit of bubbling coming up out in the zone. So I think they are out there, or there's some out there, having a little feed up. Probably got to about nine o'clock, I imagine, with a good chance of a bite in, in this weather. So I don't exactly know what I'm going to do today yet, but I've got a few little spots that I've been baiting up, just trickling it in every time I'm here, trying to do it once a day. Um, so they've all got always good little fallback spots, but also obviously it gets them on the bait. Um, using mainline link at the moment, which smells divine. Apart from when you try and air dry it in your car in a cardboard box, and then your car doesn't smell too divine. <laughs> and it doesn't work, even when it is hot. Um, obviously too much humidity. So, we will have another cup of tea, sit back, Hopefully one of these is going to go. If it does, it's going to be panic stations. Got a uh, slope of death to get down. And obviously I'm fishing out towards some boys as well, so got to be on it like Sonic. <laughs> but it's a lovely morning and it's going to be a lovely day. A bit warmer today, so might um, be able to find some. want to mooch around and check them spots. Oh yeah, before I go, another thing I've what Ben wanted to talk to you about, which I've just been reminded by. There's a noise in the background. That's cuckoos. Now, I didn't know this, but recently found out that cuckoos lay their eggs in another bird's nest. And then that hatches before the other birds, kicks the other eggs out of the nest, and the mum brings it up thinking it's its own. So what I want to know is how the hell did that ever start in evolution? Just one lazy cuckoo went, yeah, not really feeling this whole parenting thing. Uh, what can I do with this egg? Ah, oh, I'll tell you what, I'll drop it in earnest. And then another one clocked onto that and thought, that's a good idea, I'm going to try that too. And then here we are, however many years later, and it's just bred into them. I don't know, maybe they, maybe they started off like that. <laughs> But yeah, it's obviously naturally bred into them because no one's telling them that that's what they've got to do. Now that is cuckoo. <laughs> right, well, it's time for a bit of jungle warfare. One of my spots has, um, I've been baiting it last session, this session, um, just tricking a bit of baiting every day. And they've definitely been on it every day. So I went in there today, bait's all gone, obviously. <laughs> um, chucked a bit more out. Within two minutes, a really small ones come through about seven, eight pounds. And then, um, ow, mosquitoes at this time of day. Um, yeah, then another one, sort of a mid double. And then there was a bigger one out the back, but I couldn't quite see it. I could just see a big black shape. So, went and got my kit around here now. Got my sawn off. Oi, oi. Lovely little bit of kit. Weapon of mass destruction. Well, we hope so anyway. <laughs> if I get one, it's going to be straight in the lake. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be pretty exciting. Let's go and have a go.
nothing's appeared yet. But I've got a feeling they're definitely going to be back. I should never say definitely, actually. I've already taken my trainers off. My fishing trainers were caked in mud, so I washed them before I came and put them out to dry, but it rained, <laughs> so it didn't get very dry. And I've ended up having to bring a pair of white Reebok Classics, which I think you can actually get banned for on this complex. <laughs> but I've got my uh, cool the waterproof socks on just to protect my feet from muscles and things should I need to jump in. Surprised I haven't been back yet, but it has only been five minutes. I'm being a little bit impatient. They definitely knew I was here as well, so I need to keep back where possible. The speedboats are out, so I don't know whether that's going to encourage them to get in here, tucked out of the way, or a lot of wash and it's quite shallow water so that might make them not want to be here. <laughs> hopefully we'll soon find out. And hopefully that won't be the case. I'm proper choppy from these speedboats now. I keep thinking I'm seeing things, <laughs> seeing fish. I'm sure I've seen a mouth out of the back there to see like the white of the lips open up. The light's not very good. Surely. Got a little solid bag on. <laughs> These waves are coming in like this. Imagine that's just spread out everywhere as a fishing a single hook bait, but that's right. Basically this used to be an old swim. And just out here there's like sort of where there used to be a gap in the reeds, there's now just a few reeds growing. So obviously I'm hoping they're gonna bolt straight out and then uh, I'll get straight in after them. But first of all, we need a bite. I'm 100% just in one. Oh, it's just like that. Sloughing up as well. My heart is going like mad. Just can't beat this style of fishing. Yeah, there's one coming now. Look at that for an absolutely stunning long reach common jet black from the little margin spot. <sighs> Bit of weed on there. This one uh, thankfully didn't put up too much of a scrap and uh, yeah, got him in pretty easily, which is always very nice. It's got a mint mouth on it. And as you can see, top quality condition. Buzzing with that one. Oh, wicked. Well, what a wicked day on Long Reach. Obviously after sitting there for two days hoping the fish were gonna, well, not hoping they were gonna turn up, there was the odd one showing, but um, just got the feeling that it wasn't gonna happen, you know, I already had two out of that swim, and obviously got on the hunt today. This little spot I've been baiting up. It's produced the goods. <laughs> um, obviously, I, I lost the first one. Second one was that lovely common. And third one's this uh, lovely little mirror. I'll tell you what, the friendly common was in here earlier. <sighs> massive. Massive. Oh, my heart, I can't even really explain this, but I think it's unhealthy how much adrenaline I've had today. Anyway, have a look at this little beauty. <laughs> if it 
gets if it doesn't get away there. I think I've been seeing this one feed in there in there today. And uh, definitely one of the smallest of the bunch. But lovely carp, very welcome. So I'm gonna top up the spot, um, get my rods out in a swim for the night, and then hopefully that big friend here will be back tomorrow. Don't tell him I'm here. Lovely little starburst girl, isn't it? Go in, mate. No, not that way. That way. Go get out. Out, 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 out. Don't tell your friends. Okay, so hindsight's a wonderful thing. Um, if there's one thing that I'd do differently in terms of uh, or a capture or a fish that I lost, um, it would be my first trip to Rainbow. It was a good trip for me. I caught two commons over 60 pound um, quite quickly in the trip. Uh, and then the action died off for me. But on the last night, the fish were back and I sat there like late into the evening waiting for my bite, which was inevitably going to come. You know, they, they were giants. It was like people chucking fridges in over the top of me, uh, over the top of my bottle. Anyway, eventually I did get a bite and I jumped straight in the boat and in hindsight, I should really, I think, have played it from the bank because by the time I'd finished messing about this fish, it wasn't actually that far out, it, but it had kited into my left-hand margin and ended up getting caught up on a stick. It wasn't a massive snag, you know, Rainbow's full of the most enormous snags, but this, ironically, was just a stick about the width of a landing net handle and it had wrapped itself around it. So I got over the fish in the boat eventually and I managed to heave this Leviathan from the depths, you know, and this thing appeared from underneath me. And because the hook link was wrapped around the stick, I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it in the net properly. I had the net underneath it. I spent a good couple of minutes trying to manoeuvre this fish into the net. I got to touch it. I got to see every detail of it. The, the uh, scales on its back, the raggedy tail. Um, it was a big fish. It was a really big fish. Eventually, it was really docile and it hadn't done anything, but eventually it had enough. And using its weight, it just flopped and it straightened my size too, you know. Um, and very slowly in slow motion just disappeared over the edge of the net cord and I tried to scoop it but once again the stick hindered me and uh, that was it. I shouted a very large expletive across the lake and it was done. I don't think I realised quite how big it was until about half an hour later a crow he caught a 62 pounder. As I looked into his net at this fish I knew that what I'd lost was something really special you know, really special, one of the one of the giants of Rainbow. We never showed that bit on the film, there wasn't anything to show, we never talked about it. It was just one of those little stories that times like this, you know, you get to, to roll out the one that got away. Uh, maybe another 80 pound common, maybe even bigger for the album. Hey ho. I'm forever getting asked about my passion for angling and how I managed to keep the drive I've got for it. Well, I started very young. My dad used to come home from work in his little um, Morris Minor Traveller and take me and two of my brothers at the time down the River Thames. You know, my life has been fishing basically since a very, very young age. I love it. Every spare minute, if I went in a pub when I was a teenager, I was fishing or working. Nowadays, the carp, I mean, the carp scene has changed, but for me, it's just an amazing journey. Uh, the equipment's changed. It's fantastic. You can't better the equipment nowadays from what we had years ago. And if I kept coming for all them years of sleeping bags on the floor and plastic sheets over brollies, I'm doing well, I'll tell you, and little tilly lamps. The camaraderie, you know, the, the people you meet through carp fishing, it's very rare you meet, I mean, I know so many people, you're inevitably going to fall out with 1% of them, but 99.9% .9 of people, they're lovely people. You've got the main goal in life is to, is to bob into it, the rod, catch a fish, all your mates come around, you have a picture. The social side of it with the matches years ago, the French trips with your friends, the Dutch trips, the German trips, Carp fishing has grown, not just carp fishing, I fish for everything, but predominantly 75% carp fishing. I can't imagine ever not going fishing. I even, we went to Turkey the other year with, with Debbie and uh, two weeks, no fishing. Brrr, now I'm getting angry about the day. And I'll pack about the 10th day, I'm laying on the beach, Debbie's laying on her little sun lounger thing with an ice lolly and she said, you know what Ian, even if you had a rod with no line or reel and you jammed it in the sand next to you, You'd be quite happy, wouldn't you? And you know what I said? Where do they sell them then? Because <laughs> I'll go and get one. Of course I'd be happy with that. I just love fishing. My heart and soul's in it, uh, which I've been very lucky to have got a career out of it after running through jobs when I was a nipper, painting things and 
cutting grass and making things. And I, you know, I started my own business in carp fishing. It worked for me. I work for fantastic companies now. And as I said earlier, I've got great friends from carp fishing. Most of my friendship base is from carp fishing. My job's carp fishing. I'll never get enough of it. My passion is carp fishing. Well, sadly, that brings us to the end of another show. However, fear not, we shall be back in two weeks' time with something a little bit exciting for you. It's exciting for us, that's for sure. Been invited to fish a 70-year-old lake that's 100% got carp in it and has never officially been fished, but we've heard rumours they might have done one or two big ones in the past. We hope you've been managing to get out. At the moment, the winter's dragging on a little bit, but now the days are slowly starting to get longer. And even just getting out for day sessions on glorious days like this does your mental wealth the world of good. So get yourselves out on the bank, try and catch yourselves a cup. We'll see you in two weeks' time.